Hi, Daniel. I'm Penny And have you ever wondered how to draw with color? Well, kind of honestly, color goes a long way when it comes to drawing. But once you know how to color properly, you can go from this to this. This video will be all about color theory. Care to learn more? Well, let's go ahead and jump right into it. What is color theory? Color theory is the science of how color works, basically. Scientists and artists have been defining and setting up the rules for color for so long, and that is what is called color theory. Studying it can last a lifetime since there's centuries of work behind it. But for everyone's sanity, and in this video, we're just going to study the basics of importance that you need to know. But hey, don't say I never did anything for all y'all. Chromatic and achromatic. Chromatic simply means that something is full of color. Achromatic means the lack of color. So all those black and white pictures that you see, those are achromatic. Pictures that have color, those are chromatic. Unless you want your black art to be black and white, you should probably stick with chromatic light and shadows. Tone. Tone is how light or how dark a color is. Take for instance, the color red. The lighter variation of it would be pink, while the darker variation might be sepia, or reddish brown if you don't want the technical color of a name. When you use a range of tones, you create a sense of mass into something three-dimensional. Tone can be something simple like cell shading or fully rendered paintings. Hue. Hue is just the technical term for color. Red, green, blue, yellow, those are all hues. Contrast. You might hear this word a lot in the art community or the like, but all that contrast is, is it separates objects from one another. Typically, hue or tone is used to create contrast. For example, a very bright sword in a darker and grayish world, or a bright yellow sunflower in a blue sky. I promise I can draw better than this, this is just some example paintings. Saturation. Saturation is the intensity of the hue. Not to be confused with tone, which as we said, tone is how light or how dark a color is. Saturation is the intensity of the hue. For example, neon pink is a very high in saturation, while pastel blue is low in saturation. Black, white, and gray have no saturation at all because they don't have a hue. And finally, the last thing we need to talk about is atmospheric perspective. Atmospheric perspective is a term for how our planet's atmosphere affects objects that we see from a distance. Put it bluntly, the farther away an object is, the duller, grayer, and more faded they will look and take on the color of the background. When you use backgrounds in your art pieces, keep in mind the atmospheric perspective as it will create a sense of space in the artwork. Make it look more 3D and more like an actual place. Whatever style you're going for, atmospheric perspective really does play a part in creating backgrounds. Um, next, we need to talk about color temperature. Now, color temperature is just breaking down colors into warm and cool hues. Typically, we have the warm hues being red, orange, yellow, and the cool hues being blue, green, and purple. But that doesn't mean that every hue doesn't have a warm or cool range to them. 
Reds can be warm or cool, just like you can have warm or cool blues. Now, how to be sure you use the right temperature is knowing your light source. Any object that you're trying to paint, draw, or whatever tends to take on the temperature of your light source while the shadows take on the opposite temperature. So when, let's say, a person stands under the rays of a blissful golden sunlight, they will take on a warmer hue, but they will cast cool shadows. If they're under the pale moonlight, then their shadows will be a warm temperature. Now you can also use warm and cool temperatures to bring about contrast to make the viewer's eyes dart to where you want them to see. Typically, viewers' eyes are always drawn to warm colors. Next up, we have color schemes. Color schemes, oh color schemes. You ever had a t-shirt that you really liked the colors that looked really good together but never knew why? Or why a blue-skinned alien can still look good? Well, that's what color schemes are good for. But to probably describe it, we need our good old friend, the color wheel. The color wheel here is what we're going to use to point out some good old color schemes. Color schemes in of themselves are groups of colors that are grabbed from the color wheel. There's so many colors to grab from it, right? I hear you tell yourself. <laughs> Not so fast. Sure, you can grab multiple colors from a wheel, but that doesn't make it look good. So if you want the colors you picked to look good, well, there are some groupings on the color wheel to keep an eye out for. Monochromatic. Monochromatic is one color. These color schemes typically use the same color, but differentiate in tone. It's really easy to draw monochromatic and can cause for a really moody art piece. But oftentimes, they lack in contrast. Meaning you have to be really careful and try to pull in your audience to the point you want them to see the most. Anogalus. Anogalous color schemes are colors of the color wheel that are right next to each other. Like red right next to orange, or green right next to blue. Typically when you create art pieces with this color scheme in mind, one color is dominant and used more than the other. It's pretty easy to create and offers more richness than monochromatic color schemes. But yet again, it's a bit hard to create true contrast. Complementary. When you use two colors that are completely opposite on the color wheel, for example, green and red, purple and yellow, you are using complementary color scheme. It's a really great way to create contrast in a picture, but can be very difficult to create smooth balance, and it can be kind of hard to work with. Split complementary. Now, what you do with split complementary is that you take complementary color scheme and take one of those colors and use the colors on both sides of that one. For example, yellow and purple. Let's ditch the color purple and instead use the colors on both sides of purple, blue and pink. Going by these color schemes, it does offer less contrast than typical complementary but it's a lot easier to balance out. Now, triadic. Triadic uses three colors that are equally spaced on the color wheel. And the color wheel we have here, each color is in a certain slot. If you were to equally space them all out, you'd have three slots. So for example of a triadic color scheme, We'd have the colors orange, blue, and green. Triadic color schemes offer high contrast and are easier to balance out than complementary color schemes. Finally, the last color scheme we're going to talk about is triadic. 
Triadic color schemes consist of four colors where two sets of complementary colors intersect. For instance, yellow, purple, blue, and orange. Triadic color schemes have much more variety when it comes to colors, but it can be very tricky to pull off balancing on it all together. Now that we have listed all the color schemes, it should go without saying that just because you have a color scheme doesn't mean you can't apply tone, saturation, or contrast to a piece. You very much can, it's just that color schemes are colors picked that looked good together. Hope that clears some things up by now. But with that being said, I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and share with your friends if you did. Subscribe down below if you want to see more of the content. Click that bell, or as we like to call it around here, bang that bell to see more of my content because there will be tutorials in the future. Comment down below what you would like to see in future tutorials. And I'll see all my crazy creatives later.